wonderful, wonderful cat. Whenever he gets in a fix, he reaches into his bag of tricks. Felix the cat, the wonderful, wonderful cat. You laugh so much, your sides will ache, your heart will go pit a pad. Watch and Felix the wonderful cat. Well, the creator of Felix the cat is actually two people. Uh, it was the result of a symbiotic relationship between a producer named Pat Sullivan and a very creative artist and animator and director named Otto Mesmer. Mesmer started working for Pat Sullivan on 42nd Street in a little studio around 1916. Well, the partnership of Pat Sullivan and Otto Mesmer was a rather uneven one. Pat Sullivan was a more outgoing personality and he was a salesperson and he knew how to get the best kind of contracts he could at the time and he went into a whole uh, interesting uh, merchandising of his character uh, that would later be emulated by Walt Disney. Otto Mesmer was a very quiet man. He was a true artist in that he he lived for his work and he had these wonderful imaginative ideas and he was the one who thought up the stories and in fact gave the personality that we know of as Felix the Cat to that character. Um, but Pat Sullivan never gave public credit to Otto Mesmer as the creator and indeed the, the father of, of Felix the Cat. Um, and Mesmer never asked for it either. Uh, Mesmer was a very passive, uh, quiet man. He just lived to do his work. Otto Mesmer directed over 175 short films starring Felix the Cat during the 1920s. So what you see on the screen is really a manifestation of Otto Mesmer's personality. An offer came in from the Paramount Screen Magazine, which was a, uh, a show, a, 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 a film series that needed an extra, you know, uh, film. And they said, well, could Pat Sullivan fill in and do this? And he wasn't really terribly interested. So he said to uh, his production manager, the only other person working in the studio, uh, Otto Mesmer, if you want to do this on your own time, you go ahead and do it. And he said he made it a cat and he made it all black because it was easier to move. You didn't have to do a lot of outlines on it. Felix the Cat's debut film was called Feline Follies and it, uh, it opened in 1919. It was part of a, um, a four other films and something called the Paramount Screen Magazine. But it was clearly the, uh, the hit of the series in that particular uh, package. It's a very interesting film to me because in the very first scene on the screen, Felix or as he's called in the film, Master Tom manifests all of the qualities that he would later manifest as the star, Felix the Cat. He uses metamorphosis. His tail comes off and forms a question mark. He looks directly at the audience, which is what he did in practically all of his films. He used to bring the audience in very Chaplin-esque like. He's partly a little man in a cat suit who stands up and can perform. And then he's alternately a, a real cat. You know, he's magical. He's like the Cheshire Cat. You know, he keeps going back and forth between reality and fantasy. All of that is in the very first scene of Feline Follies. Pat Sullivan, as I may have mentioned, really didn't think that this was a very special film or was going to be anything very special. So you have Felix courting a cat in this and then leaving her. And at the end, he takes a gas pipe and commits suicide so that there was no follow-up. He, he thought that was going to be the end of the whole thing, just a one-shot film. And of course we know it became one of the most famous animated cartoon characters of all time. Feline Follies um, was a hit. I mean that first film uh, attracted interest in the audiences and so therefore Paramount Screen Magazine, Paramount Studios was attracted as well. Uh, Felix was, if it's possible, even bigger a success in Europe than he was in America, uh, it, particularly in England. And they had uh, uh, theater reviews with whole chorus lines of little black cats dancing and kicking. Uh, they had uh, a tremendous amount of merchandising. They had dolls and toys and games, stuffed animals. Uh, they had crockery dishes with his image on it. And there were songs about him. Felix Kept On Walking was a hit. Felix um, unfortunately did not make the transition to sound um, in time. Uh, he was usurped by the success of Mickey Mouse. Walt Disney uh, had come in in the fall of 1928 with Steamboat Willie starring Mickey Mouse who actually was based on the design of Felix the Cat. If you notice Mickey is also a circular shape except he has round ears instead of the pointed ears that Felix has and if you just transfer all of that 
you'll find that underneath the mouse, there's a cat. Uh, I mean, the Warner Brothers, uh, the year before Mickey Mouse's appearance, had created this frenzy for sound with film. Uh, Walt Disney jumped on the bandwagon, but Pat Sullivan did not. Well, Pat Sullivan died unexpectedly in 1933, and because Otto Mesmer owned nothing, he didn't own the studio, he didn't own the copyright to the character, he, uh, he had nothing to do, and so the studio closed. But Mesmer did continue to work on the comic strips, which he had done. And he did the newspaper, uh, newspaper strips, and then he did the comic strips through the 1930s and 1940s. He was busy because he was also designing um, animation for the electric lights that Douglas Lee did in uh, Times Square and all over the world, those big billboards with silhouetted characters. That was Otto Mesmer. And so he's quite busy, and sometimes he'd, he'd uh, get behind in the pages that he needed to do for the comic books and the strips. And so he needed help, and he brought in a young man named Joe Oriolo. And Joe Oriolo uh, had uh, begun an animation actually in 1933 at the Fleischer studio. And he had animated quite quickly, within a year he was an animator at Fleischer's, and he animated on uh, the uh, Betty Boop films. And eventually, um, Joe Ariello uh, was able to take over this strip and uh, 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 the newspaper comic strips and I think that started around 1954 and he did it for about 15 years afterwards. I met Joe Ariello late in his life um, and he was quite a wonderful guy. He was very uh, warm, excitable, he was really kind of passionate about he, what he was doing and uh, he always made sure to give credit to Otto Mesmer for his work on, on Felix. Uh, uh, I would come to interview him about his work and he'd say, well, you know, yes, I, I did take Felix and bring him into another area, but don't forget it was Otto Mesmer who created him and all that. And so he's always very careful to give credit where credit was due. He met the nephew of Pat Sullivan who had the rights to the thing, to the, to the character. And they formed a partnership uh, at one point and then he got a contract to do 260 short films for television. The series, when it finally went on the air, was successful and has remained uh, successful for years since. Uh, of course, one of the big differences between the movie version of Felix and the television version is that uh, in the films um, that Otto Mesmer directed, Felix is the star and Felix is the solo performer. Whereas in the television version, he's part of an ensemble, a whole cast of characters that Oriolo uh, created. Uh, there was uh, Poindexter who I believe was named after Oriolo's lawyer. And there was um, uh, Rock Bottom, and there was the professor, and then there was the Magic Bag, which was also a character unto itself. So there was a whole group of characters that Felix could play off of rather than being just alone by himself. Well, Felix is an amazing character. He's like Mickey Mouse. He's just succeeded in every, almost every area of entertainment. He's first starting in the, uh, the film medium, then in publishing, then in merchandising in terms of toys, uh, then in comic strips, and then in comic books, uh, and then finally in television, and now into DVDs, and who knows what in the future. Felix is a perpetual uh, character. He's, with Mickey Mouse, one of the great cartoon characters of all time, and he'll go on forever.